Okay, so all I've done off camera was I went ahead and I covered up my eyebrows with um, just a regular stick of Elmer School Glue. You can buy this anywhere, uh, Walmart, Dollar Store, uh, Dollar General, CBS, you know, any kind of store like that that sells school supplies and, you know, art supplies. Um, now, what I also did was I covered up my eyebrows. Um, I did it off camera because I wasn't sure how they were going to turn out. Um, they actually turned out fairly well. Um, I look a little bit crazy right now because the, the color's a little bit off, um, but it's video purpose only. It's not show makeup, so um, it's just for the video, so the color's a bit off. But it's fine. Once I highlight, it will um, come back. What I did was I used a um, caramel type of color. I don't know exactly what the color is, but not that big of a deal. Um, and just for video purposes, I'm not going to use expensive makeup. I'm going to just use some cheap stuff I have. Um, I have Maybelline New York. Um, my highlight powder I'm going to be using for this video is a it's a light number zero one. Um, that's what I'll be using for my highlight purposes in this video. Um, it actually works fairly well for highlight, and I was very surprised at that. Um, due to the fact that it's not a very, very expensive makeup brand. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use a little mirror as I do this because it's just kind of awkward going back and forth on the side here. And it's okay if um, your highlight is not absolutely perfect. It's not going to be, and that's okay. We don't expect it to be perfect. Okay. Um, and the whole purpose of a highlight on stage is the girls, real girls have a natural highlight. Um, if you look at like Cher or, you know, Beyonce or Madonna, even though they have makeup done, they still also have a very natural highlight as well. Um, so you want to just go ahead and accent that. Not highlight your forehead. Um, you can make your forehead highlight as large of a spot or small of a spot as you like. I usually just kind of go in the middle, like that, I guess, if you can really see it. <clears throat> you also want to highlight down the bridge of your nose, straight down the center, and then up again. You want to make sure you get your nose completely highlighted down the center. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to slim your nose out a little longer and make it, make it a little bit longer in a look. Um, you don't have to do the lines. I do lines. Um, only because that's what I'm comfortable doing for stage. For a regular day look, you obviously wouldn't do this. Um, but for a stage look, I recommend that you do. But, I mean, that's completely up to you. Take this look and make it your own. Um, <sighs> Cheeks. Um, also, do if you guys ever have any questions um, about anything I do, please email me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on um, a whole bunch of other little drag sites. I'm on Carrie Fairfield. I'm an active chatter on Carrie Fairfield as well. Um, just it's, don't be afraid to make your makeup your own. I mean, not everybody is going to paint exactly like, and not everybody should. Otherwise, you have no originality or creativity. This is just, you know, how I do my makeup. It may not be the way some of you girls do it, um, but it's how I do mine that works for me. Okay. Highlighted. Now what you're going to do is I use a card method. You don't have to use a card. Um, I choose to use it <coughs> because I feel it makes my lines a little more sharp and I like the definition. Um, but once again, you don't have to use the card. I'm just going to take a regular um, fluffy brush here. I don't know what this brush is from. It's just a regular brush. Um, and I'm going to go in. Like I said, I'm not using expensive stage makeup. Um, it's just a Ruby Kisses mineral powder. It is a really, really dark, dark chocolate. Um, because on stage, white girls need to darken up a little bit. Um, I it just it's all a matter of preference and colors, like how dark you want to go. I choose to go a little bit darker because that's just me. Tap off the excess. You want to take your card, right where your highlight was. You're going to just go ahead and brush your brown up. 
Um, once you get your lines, you don't really need to use the card the entire time to do your entire forehead. Um, you actually don't even have to use, you know, the brown everywhere. Um, I do, like I said, because that's just me. You can blend it out. Um, and the tip to makeup is always blend. Don't just go ahead and stick makeup in one spot and think that it's done. You always want to blend it out a little bit so it doesn't look too harsh. The trick is to look like you're not really wearing makeup, but to be wearing makeup, if that makes any sense to you guys. I have learned so many different makeup tricks from so many different girls around the world, and I appreciate everything I learn. I take a little bit of each person, and I make it my own. So just do whatever you feel you know you want to do and make it work for you. What works for me may not work for you, and that's fine. Like I said, just make this your own. Now, as you see, it's a little bit darker here in the corners. Um, take a smaller, fluffy brush. It's just a cheap brush. I'm not using expensive brushes. Um, and then just blend out with those colors. And it's okay if it gets on your eyebrows, because um, the trick that I'm going to show you is okay if it messes up a little bit, because um, I'm going to use a liquid to do my eyes anyway so it's not that big of a deal <clears throat> and it blends out fairly well um, you want to blend it into your real hairline um, if you're wearing a wig I suggest taking your cap or whatever you're wearing when you paint if you wear a cap and pull it all the way back um, I'm doing it for the purpose of I don't like to show my natural hair um, but that's just me <sighs> And also with your same brown, I'm going to take my smaller brush, my little mirror here, and I'm going to go right in here and just go halfway down. I'm not going to go all the way down my face. I'm just going to go halfway just so it gives me a line to follow. Um, I always go up into my ear. But once again, that's just what I do. Take it all the way to your middle, wherever you're comfortable at. Um, and once again, these colors are just simple colors that anybody can find in any store. And these are colors that I chose. You can choose different. Um, it looks really, really dark now because of my lighting and my camera. But once it's all together, it'll be fine. I, it'll look a lot better. It'll come together in the end. But right now, it's kind of looking a little bit crazy and all over the place. But it will come together. Um, if you mess up, just remember, always, if you're starting out, you start your lighter colors first. <coughs> Excuse me. And then do your darker colors, because your lighter colors you can always cover up with the darker. You can't cover up a darker color. So always try to go a little bit lighter first. Um, like at this stage, some of you girls who are newer should be using maybe like a, a, a peach or, you know, a little bit of a pink to do your apples first. And then do your darker colors to contour it up. I'm going backwards because I'm so used to doing it. Um, that to me it's not that big of a deal. I'm used to it. But once again, if you're comfortable, do it. If you're not, you know, take your time. Makeup is something you don't have forever, ever have to rush. Don't let anyone tell you you have to rush your makeup for a show. You never have to. If you have to, start two or three hours early in paint. I know girls that start two hours early in paint and their face looks amazing as opposed to the girls who, you know, spend ten minutes painting and you can see every, you know, mess up or not even a mess up every piece of makeup on their face because it's not really blended because they rushed or you know just take your time with it and, and have fun and play in it. I'm also going to take a smaller brush now um, with the same brown I used to contour with. I'm going to go right down my nose and in the corner and the crease of my eye right here up to my eyebrow. Because once again, this is stage made. It's for the stage, so it's meant to be a little more dramatic. I always follow my line directly up to my eyebrow. Go on my eyebrow just a little bit. Brush off your brush. <coughs> and then bring it down. Um, you don't have to do it exactly like I do. Once again, do things differently. Make it your own. Um, this is just how I have learned to do it, and it works for me. Um, and then I take my corner. And I go right down the front of my nose here, around my nose, straight down. 
on both sides. You also want to make sure you blend this very well, otherwise you're going to look you have two lines just sitting on your nose. Um, and you're going to look kind of like <coughs> you were in something. <laughs> you shouldn't be in. Sorry, this powder is messing me up. Um, and also I noticed what helps me as well is I love to have somebody watch me do my makeup because I feel like then I'm trying to really, really paint. So if you want to have a friend sit with you and have a friend talk to you while you're doing it, not necessarily to distract you, but just so you can have somebody there to talk to because I feel like I work better when somebody is watching what I do. And it usually helps. I know a lot of girls, it helps. A lot of girls can't stand having somebody else watch. I personally love it. <clears throat> okay, so I went ahead and I've done all that. As you see, it looks kind of crazy in here, but once my colors are all in and my colors are poured, it's going to look fabulous, amazing. I promise you. Um, at this point, you can take a break. You can get up and walk around. Um, I usually get up and walk around a lot. I'm not going to for the purpose of the video. Um, I usually get up, dance around, put on some music. I feel myself a little bit. It gets kind of crazy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a white. Um, this is a Color Workshop's eyeshadow. For the Color Workshop, it is a white and a black. Or a, I'm sorry, a white and a blue mix. I'm going to go ahead and take... Where is my good brush? This brush here. And I'm going to take the white that's in here on the top. And I'm going to put it in the crease of my eyes on both sides. And I'm going to pull it up because I'm not sure where my um, liquid is. I usually use a water base um, white to do my eyes. It's water activated it's by uh, Wolf or you can use Krylon. Um, you, it's water activated. It's kind of like a foundation and you set it with a powder. This for video purpose, it will work fine using just the foundation. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the corner of my eyes. Because like I said, I'm not actually painting to go to a show tonight. I am just painting for video purpose. So my makeup's not going to be, you know, extremely gorgeous. You know, but you're going to get the gist of how I do it. And honestly, this thing... Oh, see my corners? Go ahead and fill those in. Sorry, sometimes the um, cap can kind of hurt your forehead a little bit, but that's fine. So you can just go ahead here and fill this in. Like so. And it just, it, it's really, really easy to fill in something like this. Now in that area there, there was no foundation put, so it's okay. Um, I feel like a lesbian. Um, and I'm going to go ahead now and finish my white here. I have two different whites I'm going to dig into. Um, the one I'm going to use in the corners is a very, very white white. This color is like a, um, it's, once again, it's by Ruby Kiss. It is a black and white dual powder palette. Um, it's absolutely amazing. It's really, really good, and it actually shows up on your face, which is really good. Take it and put it in the corners here. And bring it all the way down to my eyes in the center here. Put it all over your lid. You want to cover your lid completely. You can do this two ways. Um, you can do it the simple way like this. Or you can go one step further and put your foundation that you put on your face on top of your eyes first. Like on your lid here. And then you can go ahead and add the white powder on top of it and it will hold and make it pop more. But like I said for video purposes, this is going to work fine. There you go. So now that I have my white on, I'm going to go ahead <coughs> and add my liquid. Remember earlier I said I was using a lot of liquid. Um, I don't have my black, so I'm going to go ahead and use the dark brown and then set it with a black powder. This is a brown color workshop eye liquid eyeliner. Um, it's just a very, very small, small little color workshop brown liquid. It's amazing and it works great. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this however you want. Now, liquid is something that you have to really, really practice with. Don't go ahead and do it if you don't know how 
sit at home and play in it for a little bit and see if it works for you. This works for me perfect, and I love liquid. Thanks to one of the girls who actually taught me how to paint, um, Amaya Man St. James. He uses a lot of liquid, and I love her look. And I noticed a lot of the girls now are using it, so check it out. It's cool. Um, take your time here. And you want to go ahead and pull your liquid all the way up and off your corners. Like so. It's a brown, so it's not going to be popping as much. I'm going to go ahead and keep it brown. I'm going to set it with a black on the top. Um, back in where I'm from, they usually call me like the liquid queen because I use a whole lot of liquid. I'm really confident in my hand skill with my liquid. Um, I'd rather use liquid over anything any day, but that's just me. <coughs> now that it's on there, I'm going to go ahead and take my smallest tip brush that I have. It's a very, very small, small tip. And I'm going to put my black from my Ruby Kiss color black on it. And then take it and then just set it and dab it along your eyes. You may have to run your color through a couple of times. And that's okay. It happens. You want to do it quickly before your liquid dries, but you don't want to rush it and mess it up. So if you're not experienced with liquid, like I said, take your time. But once you get used to it, it's like riding a bicycle. And it's something you'll never forget how to do. Okay, so I went ahead and I set it. Now what I'm going to do is... Uh, what am I going to do next? I'm going to take my brush here. My small brush again, and I'm going to take a lighter brown than what I used for my contour, and I'm going to go ahead and cut my crease. Now, you can be over dramatic with your crease, or you can take it to a very simple cut. Um, like, I'm going to go very, very simple. I'm not going to go crazy big with it tonight. I mean, I'm going to go crazy with the liquid on the bottom and stuff to show you some cool designs, but usually it's very simple. You want to take it and pull it from here, and then just shape your eye. And what that does is it goes ahead and it gives you more of a shape to your lid, so you're not kind of just guessing where your colors go. You'll automatically know where everything is set. <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and take a darker color, which is the brown I used for my contour, blow off my brush, and I'm going to go over where I just put the lighter brown. Like I said, always start lighter and go darker, um, and I believe in that motto as well. I always, with my eyes, I usually go lighter first and then darker, just because you never know what can happen and you don't want to mess up your eyes as you know far into your makeup and you always want to be careful about fall off um, only because you are I'm using a white for my lid you can use any color you want I'm just using a white usually my colors match my costume for stage. Um, I have a pink costume. I have pink lid. And I try to wear pink all night, kind of get the colors going. Um, or like, I was going to for my next show. I'm going to try this blue. It's an electric blue. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I actually have some blue costumes being made. So it'll be really good, and it'll you know blend up very very well. 
And remember, during a show, you don't want to have to do too much changing to your makeup until you're really confident. So make sure whatever makeup you try to use kind of blends with your outfits a little bit. So you're not going out with like bright pink eyeshadow and wearing a green outfit. You don't want to look like a Crayola box exploded on your face, which is kind of what it looks like right now. But I promise you it will look a lot better when it's done. I'm going to go ahead and keep pouncing on the dark here just until it gets to how I want to look. And I'm going to blend it out just a little bit so it's not so harsh on my brow bone. Okay. So you just blend it out just enough to when I look directly at you, it sets right. <coughs> now, um, there's a couple different things you can do. I'm going to use a liquid. Um, you're going to line your eyes. You can do it with either your very, 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 very small, small, small black brush. There you go. Your very small black brush. Or you can use a black pencil. Um, you can use liquid. I choose liquid and then I will set it with my black. That's just what I do. It doesn't have to be done that way. That's just how I do it. So here I go. What I always do as a good tip is if you're using liquids, you can't open your eyes until it's dry. So always go ahead and take your brush and put it on your product. I usually put a lot of black on my brush for this part, just you know, for the purpose of it setting a liquid. And you don't want to ruin your brush, so you put enough on there to cover it. Now, once again with your black or with your uh, liquid, always shake it, make sure it's fresh so it doesn't have any air bubbles so you don't get happen through your face or your area you're working on and run out of product. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and use my mirror again. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my crease. I'm going to look where I want it to go. I'm going to go up my eye. And then close it. I always start very, very, very close to my lash line first. And then work my way up from there. Because you never know, you know, how high you want it to go until you open your eye and look and see if that makes you happy. As you can see, I've already cut it with the liquid. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to set it with a powder. I can always go ahead and make it, you know, smaller. Um, it just depends on the shape that you want for your eyes. I like a very open lid. So I only like to really cut, you know, just a lot on the corner here and a little bit on the inside. I like to keep these lines as tight as I can. Just like so. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same with the other side. Um, and it's okay if one side goes up a little bit higher. Once your lashes go on, you're really not going to notice that significant of a change unless if it's that much of a, you know, change in the, the dimensions. Um, oh, you always want to keep it somewhat close. Doesn't be perfect. Like I said, nobody's perfect with their makeup. Um, just take your time with it and it's a lot of fun. Now back to my liquid. I'm going to go ahead and trace out my eye in the front here. It's a little bit hard to do in this light that I have. I usually have a really big overhead and a mirror with a light on it. But like I said, I'm not painting for a specific show this evening. So I'm not pulling out all of that. I'm just using a couple of small lamps. Um, that's another important thing too is you always want to check out your lighting when you're doing your makeup. Um, you always make sure you have the best lighting for the best angles as well. You don't want to paint in the dark, although I do a lot of girls who can paint dark in you know a darker setting and you know be more comfortable than painting with all the lights on. I prefer a lot of light. Uh, there you go. 
my eyes kind of water a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of the tissue. It happens with liquid when it touches it, you know, runs just a little bit. Uh, okay. Now, perfect. It's not smudged at all. Okay, so now it's cut on both sides. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead in now and add a little bit of color in here off of my brown. And like I said, I'm going to go, when my, I do my eyes, I always do lighter to darker, except for right down here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add this pink. It is just a, um, it's called War Paint Beauty. It's an eyeshadow. I'm not really sure. It's called Sparks. Um, I don't know where I got it. Um, I traveled and, you know, exchanged makeup with curls. And I believe um, my daughter gave me this. I'm not really sure. It just kind of happened that I have it. If it's anybody's, I'm sorry I have it. Um, it just kind of ended up in my box one day. It kind of happens. Um, I'm going to go ahead with a slightly smaller brush. Um, this is a boutique brush. Um, it's number 13. So it's an amazing brush to use. It's got a slight angle on it, which is great because it'll help you pull the color. You don't want to go crazy with all the pigments, only because this pink is so, so, so bright. Roll off your excess, and you want to just dab where you want it, which in my case, I want it right here in the corners. So I'm only going to go about halfway up here, because I am going to add some more colors to my eyes as well. You really can't see it on here, but it does make a large difference. Um, so your colors don't look like, you know, a raccoon with just two colors. I always try to add a little bit more color in my eyes. And it's always fun to play in colors and try new things. I encourage you all, just try something different. Don't always go with the same look, because it looks good on somebody else. <coughs> and now what I'm going to do is, I do my eyebrows a little bit different. Um, at this stage I make up, I usually do my points. And then I draw them out from there. Um, like I said, I cover my brows because my boy brows are not large enough for stage makeup. Now, for every day look that I go with, they're very perfect to use. Sorry, I just got to fill some spots in here. Um, my eyebrows are perfect for that. Um, for drag, if your eyebrows work, your eyebrows work great. I was not blessed with a whole lot of eye space, so I kind of have to play around a little bit with some colors. Um, this is just a clean color mechanical pencil. It's a burgundy. It's AP 16. It's just a very, very pretty, pretty, like a burgundy color. It's great. Like it's a mechanical pencil. These things are amazing when doing your eyebrows. Oh, I don't have much left, so I can't mess up too much here. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my small mirror. I want to shape out where all my eyebrows to go. And remember, my trick when doing your eyebrows is your eyebrows are always thicker in the base, and then they thin out as they go. Because I, I can't stand, and it's just a pet peeve of mine, when I see queens that have these beautiful, beautiful makeup done, and then you get a glance at their eyebrows, and their eyebrows are paper thin, 90% of real girls' eyebrows are not paper thin, and we are trying to make an illusion of an exaggerated woman. Um, so you just want to take your colors and be different and play in it a little bit. Um, with my luck, the luck I'm having today, my pencil is running out as I'm doing this. But that's okay because I have a color I can play with and get it to even out. For the most part, they're not bad. They're actually good. Um, and I always shape my eyebrows into points here. Um, I always tend to give them a little bit of a shape. Like so. Um, you see the, the arch comes up in here and it comes up and then back down. I leave a lot of space in here for color because I go really dramatic and big for stage. Um, for everyday look, I would not, I keep my regular eyebrows. I trim them down a little bit and I arch them myself or I go get them waxed. And I keep a little bit of the corners here. So with my regular eyebrows, 
they come up from here in the corners and they come to probably about here in height and then they arch back down. So they're pretty much the same shape as my drawn on brows. My cosmetic brows, I should say. Um, they're just a little bit, you know, thicker than I like, so I don't use them for stage. Okay. Brow tutorial done. Um, also, if you need a tutorial on how to glue down your eyebrows, I will go ahead and I'll post a link somewhere down here or over here or something um, to a guy whose YouTube name is Petri Lude. He's absolutely amazing. I love him so much, and I've learned so much from watching his tutorials. He does, you know, day face. He does all kinds of stuff, and he has a great tutorial on how to do your eyebrows. Now, a lot of girls I've noticed, they don't do this. Um, I do because it's to me it completes the look on your eyes. Take your black again and your very, very, very small, small, small angle brush or a black pencil. Don't use a liquid for this, but you are going to get right on your waterline. Um, I don't recommend a liquid because what happens when liquid gets wet? It runs. Um, a black shadow like this works amazing for this. What you're doing is just closing in the eye so you don't have a black line here and then a space and then your eyeball itself. You want it all to blend together. So you always want to close in all your colors and, you know, fine tune your lines and do what you have to do to make your face look good. You don't have to do this step. This is just a step, once again, that I do because I like the way it looks. And it's a pet peeve of mine of girls that don't do it because. To me, it just doesn't look as polished, but that's personal opinion. Um, not everybody's going to like it, and it is what it is. <laughs> okay, so now that my face is pretty much sketched out to where it's going to go, um, now you can start adding your colors and your liquids, and you can play in all of it. It's great, and it's so much fun. So here's what I'm going to do now. The same brush that I just used for my pink, the angle brush, the 013, I'm going to go ahead and add my dark chocolate. Okay. Make sure there's no little hairs because little hairs will mess up your face. Okay. Then you want to take it and pull your colors from your corner and blend them up just to shape your eyes. You, um, I'm not going to go, like I said, all out crazy with this tutorial. I'm giving you just a general idea of how to look. Um, follow it, don't follow it, like it, don't like it, but this is how I do mine. But like I said, take my ideas if you like it, great. Run with it, change it up a little bit, do something your own to make it unique and different and make your eyes look different, more different than any other girl. Because <sighs> in this business, creativity is key. You don't want to look like everybody else. You don't want to sound like everybody else. You don't wear the same hair as everybody else. So you always want to change your look up. I change my look up a lot. Um, a lot of times I'll go with a black brow or I'll go with like a, the maroon or the burgundy brow and I'll keep it that color throughout the entire night. It really just depends on the the darkness in my makeup. I don't want to do a dark face with a dark brow. I'd rather go with like a, a darker face with like a little bit of a lighter brow. So I think with the color I have now, I'll just go ahead and add a little more of a brown color, a shadow to it just to kind of give it a little more definition. Um, and then when I do like a dark goth face, I can use the darker brow as well. Um, I just usually don't do black brows because black brows don't look good on me because I like brown hair, like light brown hair, auburns. I like red. I like blonde. I usually don't like dark, dark hair. So, you know, you get the point. <coughs> now I'm going to take a, it's a four color palette. Um, as you see, this color I cracked out because I never, ever use it. Um, and it got wet, so I just cracked it out and threw it away. Um, there's this here. It's kind of like a, um, like a purple. It's an eggplant. Um, this is like a brown sugar color here. And then this one was like a sand dollar. I'm going to take the sand dollar color. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the side of my brush here. And I am using the side of my brush because it makes it easier to pick up your color. I want to get a lot on there. So I'm going to, Dig and dig and dig. You don't want to dig. You just want to rub just to get your color. Now I'm going to take where my brow is. I hope you can see this on hand. 
and then just pounce the color right on. You don't want to pull because um, you do have glue under there and sometimes when you pull it it messes up the glue. You want to just pounce the color in there to give yourself that shape. Now do you kind of see the shape I'm talking about? Thumbs up if you do, great. I'm going to go ahead now and pounce some more of this color on my brush and I want to go ahead and do the other side. And this is where you can really shape your brow. Um, if you drew it on and it's not as good as you wanted it to be, this is where you can go back in and fine tune the shape of your brows. Um, this has always worked best for me as I draw them on freehand and I just kind of go through with this and I, I fine tune the shapes. And then I go through my finger and I just kind of rub a little bit and just, you know, I'm one of them people that if it doesn't look right on me, I want to start over. So always do what works for you. Always try new things. Um, drag is up being a pioneer and, and trying new things and, you know, bringing different lights and different forms of entertainment. Not everybody's a dancer. Not everybody's a makeup girl. I know a lot of plenty, I know plenty of, enter, of amazing entertainers that aren't makeup queens. They're not, you know, flawless with the makeup. They still have little imperfections here and there, but they're amazing on stage. Or I know girls who are flawless in the face and still getting the hang of the stage thing. <coughs> um, <clears throat> I consider myself in between. Um, it just depends on what I do on stage and how I decide to do my makeup. Um, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm usually fairly good with makeup. And I'm, I'm entertaining on stage. I'm not what you call a hip-hop dancer. I do, like, a lot of kicks and, like, hair flips and stuff like that. That's what I do. Um, as you see, the look is starting to come together. Now you can see where the, the color is here. I'm going to go ahead and take my color that I use for my highlight. The same powder as my highlight. Just put a little bit on the corners. Get my small mirror again. I always use a small mirror no matter. Even if I have a big mirror in front of me, I always have a pocket mirror just so I can get up close here. And I'm going to go right along my brow line with my highlight powder. Just because I'm not going on a stage, I was going on stage, I would use either a clown white or a water based white with a regular white eye shadow. So I'm going to go like this with this here just to kind of give me an idea of how it's going to go and because on camera it'll pop more for you guys so you can get more of an idea as to what I'm talking about so you don't think I'm just talking crazy. There we go. Um, and my makeup I can usually do an entire stage face in 20 to 25 minutes. Um, sometimes less, sometimes more depending on how detailed I get. Um, this video is going to be longer. I want to go ahead and edit it here and there. Um, I will have the full video if anybody ever wants to look, watch the full video and kind of get, you know, the in-depth stuff. I'm going to edit this and kind of crop out little spots. I'm going to give you an idea of what I'm doing, do it, and then, you know, go to the next step only for time purposes. I'm probably going to speed this up as well. But like I said, I am here. I'm not the greatest. You know, but I, I know what I know, and what I know has helped me and has helped others. So if you ever need me advice or anyone just to talk to, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on, um, oh God, what am I on? Harry Fairfield, I'm on YouTube, I'm on all kinds of stuff. So make sure you guys just hit me up whenever you need anything at all. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to take the white that pops, because I just did the highlight powder, just so you can kind of get an idea as to where my white is going to go. The same white that I use on the corners of my eyes, I'm going to rub on the side of my brush, get a nice thick coat of white pigment on there. I'll break it first. Take my small mirror again, and then I want to go ahead and dab with the white. I'm going to pounce again. I never want to pull my colors on my eyes, I always want to pounce. The only color I will pull is to cut my crease, and that's only because I'm trying to stretch that color, make it thicker here and thinner on the insides. Um, I don't ever, you know, not pounce my whites and my pinks and my beiges. I always, you know, pounce those, pull the darks, pounce the lights. 
There we go. Now you can kind of see the white there. Um, and some of you may say, you know, that I'm doing a lot of repetitive stuff. I can save time by doing it this way. I know that. I'm just playing in makeup for the video purpose. Um, like I said, for stage, I would have probably been done by now. I'm just going in depth with it so everybody can kind of get different ideas on how to do your makeup. Once you get good enough and, and confident enough in your makeup, you can try like a nude eye. To me, the white is so much easier than doing like a a blasted lid and an amazingly cut crease and just a simple nude eye. I can't do a nude eye, so if anybody knows how to do a really good nude eye, let me know. Or if you've seen a good video, let me know because I would love to do just a simple nude eye and a really nude cheek and still make it pop on stage. I can't. I'm dramatic. I've learned to paint from old school queens, and this is how I do it. I take the old school, mix it with a little bit of new school, and bam, you got a face. Um. Also, what's good is I'm, I have a really crazy personality. Um, I'm one of them people either you'll love me or you'll hate me. There's usually no in between. Either you love me so much or you hate my guts. And either way, I, I really would like for everybody to like me. But at the end of the day, in this business, uh, you make more friends when you're a bitch, I've noticed. Now, and I'm talking so much a bitch and, I guess I'll get into drag etiquette with some of you guys. Um, never bite the hand that feeds you is what my dad, my real father, always used to tell me, and he's right. You never want to, you know, hurt those who are putting in their all to help you, and you never want to burn bridges. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect that I've never burned bridges because I burn plenty of bridges. Um, I'm one of them girls that has an attitude, and that's what I do. If I feel like I'm being talked down to or disrespected, I will let you know, you know, this is how I feel. Um, but that's just me. Please don't do everything I do. I'm, I'm kind of crazy. I do different things. What I'm going to do now is <coughs> back to this really, really pretty bright, bright pink. You really can't see the, the beauty in this color, I guess, because it's so weird on cam. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful pink. I want to go ahead and take it and pounce a little bit just here. Just so my eye doesn't look like a raccoon with just a black and a white. Um, the black and a white looks good on some people. I don't personally care for a black and white lid on myself. I care for color. Um, I never used to. I always used to just do the simple, basic, get on stage, you know, get on stage, make your money, and go makeup. Now I'm into more of the, you know, trial and error stage. I like to try new things, see how they work. If they don't work, fine tune it or just 86 the idea altogether. Um, I have the same brush that I used earlier, my brown. I'm going to take and just pull a little bit. I know I said don't usually pull, pull just a little bit to blend your colors together. Um, the white's going to look like it's blending out on the camera, but in person and on stage, the white is there. You'll see it there. Just on camera, it's going to look like it's blending out a little bit because it's not going to pop as much as this is, but that's okay. Now, <coughs> fun part. I usually use liquid. I'm going to go ahead and start out with a small, small brush. My very, very small brush. It's the uh, 16 number 16 brush. From boutique, it's a very, very small, small, fine tip. I'm going to take it and my jet black, which is, I forget which one I use. I use, that's too purpley. I'll use this one. Um, you can do this step with different colors. Um, I usually just do a black and a white and then my color up here and down here and I draw and stuff. It's cool. Um, just take the black in here again. Get it on your brush. You don't want to add too much extra, only because you're going to try to not get a lot of fall off. So tap off your brush, and you're going to do what's called cutting your crease. I've done it with the brown. I've done it with the pink already. I'm going to go in now with the black and cut my crease again. So it's all it's a blending process.
And it's not really um, like brain surgery or like rocket science. You just kind of follow the crease that you had already previously made with the other colors. Um, and you can do this a couple different ways. You can stop your black here like I do, or you can go all the way down to your nose. I stop it um, only because I don't like the way it looks on me all the way down to my nose. And you want to take your colors, pull them up, and then I stop it right there. And then just set simple, it's done. Um, but like I said, I use liquid, so I usually go over it with liquid and then a powder again to set it. And that's just kind of what I do for stage. Um, and I will do that for the video as well to show you guys how to get the cuts like I do. Because um, a lot of girls, they ask, you know, how do you do it and it looks so perfect? Or how do you do it and it looks so blended? Um, it's a lot of practice with liquid. And it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of putting on the makeup. If it doesn't work, wiping it off and trying it again. Um, I recommend for some of the newer girls to sit down and actually play in your face before you get on stage. Um, always learn how to do your makeup first because I believe makeup will make or break you. Um, you don't have to look beautiful. You don't have to be, you know, win awards for most beautiful girl on the show or pageant or whatever. But you should still have a concept of your face and know kind of what you're doing before you get on stage. My biggest pet peeve is girls that don't take the time to learn. They just think because they have makeup and a wig, they want to just get up on stage and try it. I hope it doesn't offend anybody out there. If it does, I'm really sorry. But like I said, I say what I have to say. I'm going to go ahead and take my other blending brush now. Um, not that one. I guess I'll just use this one. Um, my number 13 brush again, which is my angle brush here. I'm going to go ahead with my liquid. I'm going to pounce the color on because I am going to go ahead and add powder now to the piece and I'm going to pull it up more and give myself a cute little you know black eye like a smoky kind of look and like since this is a brown I'm going to have to, have to set it again and that's fine it's a little more work when it's a different color And then while I'm at it, I want to go ahead and touch up the bottom while the top is drying. Okay. Now that it's still wet, you can kind of get the color idea. Now you take your black and you dab. Um, you can make this as dark as you want or as light as you want. I always do a really, really dark, dark, dark cut. Um, just because it kind of makes my face look good the way I like it. Um, you don't always have to do a black crease. Like I said, you can do a pink crease, a blue crease. You can cut your crease with pretty much any color of the rainbow. These are just the colors that I chose to use. So once again, don't go in there and say, Ooh, Victoria Vons and I had to use this color. I don't. I don't recommend any queen paint exactly like me. You can try it. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, take your own look and kind of run with it. And it works. Add some more black to your 13 brush, which is your small angle brush. <coughs> take some more of your liquid. And then it's time for the other side. It's always fun to try to get your sides to match up, right? Because they never really do. You always have one side more perfect than the other. And that's okay. I mean, on stage, you're not really going to notice it too much as long as it's not too dramatic of a difference. I like to play with the dimensions. So I tend to do a little bit more than needed just because that's what I choose to do. Once again, not everybody is going to look exactly like me, and I don't want everybody to. I'll go ahead and touch up the bottom down here again, make my lines right. I want to go ahead and set it with my black. Um, I usually tap it when I have a lot of pigment on the brush all the way around. 
Then I like to brush off and I kind of blend up with the excess that's left on my eye. Um, you don't want to go crazy because you don't want to like even punch in the face. But you also don't want it to rub away right away. So you kind of want to make it stand out a little bit. Use your judgment as to how you like it to look. To me, my eye right now is fine. But I'm going to go ahead and play a little bit more because that's what I do. Um, you could stop here if you wanted, or you can go a little more crazy, which is what I'm going to do now. Now that my eye is pretty much done, I could go on stage, put some lashes on, and go. Um, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm going to play in some more colors. <coughs> like I said, my camera color is a little bit off. Um, I will have photos of this look, you know, in a better light, so you can see the entire look with some hair and all put together. But for now, this is kind of what it's going to get. And I think I am going to go just a little bit darker with my brows. Um, I usually, if I do decide to do a black brow, I take my black and I put it on my lid, or on my brow, and I just pull. I don't put any more color on. I pounce a lot of black in the corners, and then I just pull the color up. And the only reason I'm doing a black brow right now is because my pencil ran out. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye here. Um, and <laughs> a lot of you are going to notice that I kind of do things off the wall. I don't usually follow any set guidelines as to how it's going to look. I kind of just do how I feel I want it to look. And that's okay. I always do one thing though, as I always make sure that my brows are fairly as close to twins as possible, although your eyebrows are never twins, they're always cousins. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and play my cheeks a little bit, let my eyes kind of dry from the liquid and all that good stuff. The same pink that I use in my corner here which you really can't see. I'm going to take and dab, get some color on my brush, and I'm going to just dab my cheeks here, your apples, and then go up. Um, whenever you do your makeup you always want to blend up. You never want to blend down. Um, I don't kind of see the reason, but I was always told to blend up. That's what I do. I don't want to see a whole bunch of you running around looking like me, so like I said, take your colors, blend them, make them your own, do what you have to do. Um, I am going to take my colors after I'm done here and fine tune this a little bit more off camera, um, but I'll be sure to go ahead and note everything I do off camera so you guys know, so you don't think I'm kind of just leaving you hanging here. And like I said, it's all about blending, so you always want to blend your colors. Um, my line is really harsh, and that's okay, because once again, it's a stage line, that's okay. There. Um, then I always, periodically, I usually do it more often, I just didn't because of video purposes. Um, I always go through and I re-highlight my face a couple times. Throughout the video, um, it makes your lines stand out a little bit more and it kind of shows you where everything is going to go on your face as you're doing it. There we go. Um, and it just all depends on how you want to be perceived on stage. Um, as you see, I usually go really, really good on my highlight. I always, you know, like you really highlight it, and that's always just me. Highlight is something that you do at your own desire, um, however you like it. I will recommend that every time you go on and off stage, you re-highlight again, 
Make sure your face doesn't look oily. Um, because an oily face with a lot of makeup on it doesn't look pretty. So you always want to make sure your face stays highlighted. Highlight. Um, and you never want to let it sit on your face on stage. Um, don't let the girls tell you you have to let it sit on there on stage. It doesn't have to. Um, for a stage, I usually take a <coughs> a white palette. It's like a Ben Eye white. Um, it's probably about that round, and it's a white eyeshadow. I take my powder puff and I rub that in the white, and I kind of dab under my eyes a little bit and pull it out, and it kind of highlights right inside of here to make it pop a little bit more. Um, once again, that's just what I do. You don't have to. It's just something I choose because I like the way it looks. Oh, go ahead now and add. A little more color in my corners here. And yes, I'm adding a lot to it right now because it's something I'm doing for video purposes. I'm going to show you guys something. Okay, you really still can't see on the video. But in the photos, you'll see the different colors in my face. And it's great. Um, also, just to play around in some color, the um, let's see, the eggplant. And take on your small brush, rub it through, get some a good amount of product, blow it, tap it, whatever you do to get the excess off. Um, you can always go right here in your corners as well. You can do different things with your makeup. Don't limit yourself to one color or one look. Always play around and try new things. Um, I go and usually go inside of here with like a pink or like a purple or you know a color that make it pop and and look really really good. Um, now what I'm going to do is <clears throat> a lot of girls don't do this. Um, I've seen a couple of girls do it. <laughs> I'm sure a lot do. I've only met one other girl queen who does this. Um, I'm going to take my eyebrows, go over them with my liquid to get it to the desired thickness that I want and then pull. And it just kind of sets your brows a little bit more and it will give it more of a definition as well. But remember, don't go too crazy with it. Especially if you're not comfortable with liquid. Okay. Eyebrows are pretty much done. Now I'm going to take um, my liquid again. Just a little bit on the tip. It's a very, very small, small tip. You'll see it's very easy to work with if you're comfortable. And I'm going to take where my eyebrow is, and I'm going to pull just a little bit so it looks kind of like hairs coming off your brow, but you don't want to go crazy with it. Just over here in the corners, I do a little bit, or just a tip. Because if you do the rest, it's going to look like it's all messed up. Um, and usually on stage, you don't notice it. Um, but you'll notice it in photos. You'll see like some of the girls have a little bit you know, more pulled. Um, it's because they take their liquid or their shadow on an angle brush. And they just pull. And it adds a little more definition. So it makes your eyebrows look a little more real. So you don't look too cartoonish. It looks a little bit like it's meant to be there. Now, due to the hair that I'm going to put on for the photos, <coughs> I'm going to take my um, small, small brush, I guess, here, and I'm going to take some black. Always remember, too, when you ever put black on a brush, it's probably going to ruin the brush and keep the brush that color. Um, unless you know how to wash them. If you do, great. Wash your brushes out. If not, not a big deal. I usually set aside different colors for different brushes. Or different brushes for different colors. Yeah. Um, I'll get to my lips in a second here. I'm going to go ahead and take 
my hairline and I'm going to blend the black into it. Because of the hair that I'm going to wear for the photos, um, I want it to look as blended and as natural as possible. I don't want the hair to stand out and look too cartoonish. I want it to kind of blend a little more. So just a little bit of black goes a long way. You don't need a whole lot of it, but you do need I usually put a little bit in there. And I blend up. Okay. Now the same brush, even though it has a little bit of black on it still, um, that's fine. I'm going to take it and pull in here. Just to blend out some of that color. There we go. And blend up. And on stage, it looks really, really chiseled and clean. I'm going to take the chocolate that I used earlier for my contour on my large brush. I'm going to go underneath my chin and around my neck area just to give a separation and blend down just a little bit. Just so it doesn't look all wrong colors. When you move, it kind of separates a little bit. Um, for those of you who are drawing on breasts, who don't have natural breasts. Um, there's a couple things you can do. I'm not <laughs> great with it, but there's a couple tricks. Um, take your brush, there's a little brown on it, and apparently you just blend and get your colors and it kind of will give you that shape, I guess. I don't like to do that, so I don't usually. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead, um, eyelashes, <laughs> please, please, please wear eyelashes, um, I, I really, really, really don't mind girls that don't wear them, um, I just prefer to see drag queens and transgender performers with longer lashes, it, it gives more of an illusion. Do -do. These are... 101s, I believe. Yeah, I believe these are like 101s or 301s. However, whatever size you decide to go with. Um, these are just glam lashes. Um, they're human hair eyelashes, so they'll last you for a little bit longer. Um, price, as you can see, was they're cheap. They're 249 girls. Go get yourself some lashes. Do what you have to do. There you go. Better way to see the lashes. There we go. <coughs> um, you can use a couple different things to glue them. You can use either a, um, oh, what's the word? Either a lash adhesive that comes with most of them. The ones I bought didn't come with one, and that's fine. Because I use uh, Salon Pro Exclusive Hair Bonding Glue. It is what they use to glue weaves and tracks and all that fun stuff to your head. Um, I don't usually put it directly on the lash. I open it. As you can see, brand new. Never used it. Pop it off. And remember, this is messy, so make sure that you're comfortable using this. Try it out a couple times. You don't have to glue it directly on your eyes when you're trying it out. Glue it on your hands. Glue it on your cheeks. Glue it on your eye, your forehead to give you an idea of how the glue feels when it's on there because it doesn't always feel comfortable. And it has an Ugh, an odor to it, it's terrible, but I found this holds your lashes on so much better than any other product out there. Okay. Get it on the corner of your brush. Um, I usually do it first before I open my lashes, or I can open my lashes first, doesn't matter. Um, you want to let the glue get a little bit tacky. I can get these lashes open today. Um, you want the glue to get a little bit tacky so it dries a little bit quicker and so it doesn't burn as much. Because I will tell you, this glue is not lash glue. So it does have a little bit of an odor and a little bit of a sting to it. It's okay. Take it, put it directly on the top of the lashes. Don't put it on the back, don't put it on the front. Put it directly on the top because at the end of the day you want your lashes to look full and, and firm and 
perky and pretty and you know you get the point now when you put on lashes there's two sides there is a smaller side which goes on the inner parts of your eyes here and the larger side that goes on the outer so make sure you're putting them on right otherwise your lashes aren't going to sit right and you're going to look really funny you're going to look crazy okay small mirror again it's always great to do this it's easier <coughs> and I find getting yourself comfortable when you're doing it is the best way to do it. So one second, we'll be on the last year. And you always want to put your lash from if you can from corner to corner and lay them as flat as possible on your eyes. Um, if you have mascara, it's always good to put mascara on your natural lashes first. And then go ahead and glue as your lashes will stick a little bit like they're doing now. Um, it's okay if it happens. Take something pointy. Be very careful of your eye. And there you go. And your eyelashes on. Um, and then I usually cover these with mascara. However, I do not have mascara right now. But you can see the length um, lash on my eyes itself. They're rather large, and that's good for stage. Um, for every day, if you are transgender or if you are just a girl who likes her lashes, you don't have to go this large. Um, I'm just going large for stage purposes and photo purposes. Next lash here. Go ahead and do the same thing. Take your brush, dip it in your glue, and remember, hold your lashes so the glue's not going to get all over your fingers and so your lashes don't stick. Because usually, once your lashes stick to your hand, they're kind of hard to maneuver back into shape, so you can put them anywhere else. Put it once again directly on top of the lash. Don't go behind or forward because you want your lashes to sit. Flat on your forehead, uh, your forehead, flat on your eyelid without looking crazy. Okay. You can also take that same brush if you need to and go in and, you know, hold your lashes and pull your lashes and do what you have to do. Either way, it doesn't matter. <coughs> Once again, get comfortable when you put your lashes on because this is one of the hardest parts to do for me anyway is my lashes and my lips. So, bend your lash a little bit, drive it in the center, and place it. There you go. And you always want to, when you put your lashes on, you always want to wait a second before opening your eye. You want to make sure your lashes kind of set a little bit before you open so they don't just kind of flop around and mess up all that work you've done to your eyes. There we go. My lashes are on. Oh, they're so weird. I've not been on stage makeup in months. Feels good, though. So now that your lashes are done, you can go ahead and take that off. Um, mascara, I, like I said, I don't have any. Um, I'll use my brush to show you. Put mascara all above your lashes here on the tops, the bottoms. Your bottom lashes here, you always want mascara on them as well. You can use your brush to push your lash out. Just be very careful you don't stab yourself in the eye. We're not trying to go to the hospital here and do a dragon makeup. Okay, so now I'm going to play with my lips. Um, my lips to me are always the hardest because I have a very small top lip. I have to exaggerate the color. And it's really, really hard for me to do to find a color that fits my lips the way that I want it to. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I usually would take my pencil that I did my eyebrows with. Um, oh, there is a little bit left. Fabulous. I can show you what I do. And I usually go right underneath my lip. On the bottom. Well, 
on your bottom of your lip, like so. There we go. On film, once again, you really can't see it too much, but in the photos on the post, you'll see the difference. Now I'm going to go ahead and play with the top here. This is where I always mess up to so take your time because to me the lips are always the hardest for me to do because like I said, my top bottom is easy, my top is really small. I have that Reba lip, so it's very hard to exaggerate it. I don't know how to do it. Somebody knows how to do it. Let me know. Uh, fairly decent, I guess. Okay, now what you can do is you can do a couple different things. You can take a lipstick, a lip gloss, a eyeshadow, um, a cream. You can use your foundation. Um, what I'm going to do is continue with this color that I'm using the burgundy here. Um, once again, it's an AP. Number 16, it's great. It's an amazing color. I love it. And I want to just go ahead and color my lips a little bit. Like so. And remember, it's stage. So it's going to be a little more dramatic. And keep that spot there in the center. Go to the top as well. Spot in the center. Um, the reason you want to keep that, at least I always keep that, is so I can go ahead with my salt. It's a um. I don't even know what you would call it. It's a really, really soft, small, small brush. It is, doesn't have a number, of course, go figure, like my life, out of whack. <coughs> Take a, I have a four color um, foundation palette here. I don't remember, I believe we got this one from Crystal. I'm not really sure. It is Avon. It's like a light palette. Um, and take, I always take the lightest color in my palette, which is this one right here. The palette's kind of messy and really hard to see, but this color right here is usually the color I will take, and I will give myself, try to give myself the illusion of a luscious full lip. There we go. Not bad. Now I'll do the same to the top. And I'm going to show you another trick afterwards as well. It's going to make them pop even more. What I've noticed is you always want your top lip to pop. Especially if it's smaller, you want to do anything to make it pop out. So you want to keep your lip lined as much as you can. But you want to add color. There we go. Now, um, just one of these um, eye pencils, like a shadow thing. I don't know the correct name of it. I don't care to know it. I just know it's a thingy and it works. You're going to take your colors. You're going to pull. Get a little bit of white eyeshadow on there. Once again, this is our stage. It's not for everyday look. It 
and you're going to blend. Same thing with the top. And you can go over that again with a um, clear gloss if you want. I'm not, just because it's video purposes, time consuming. I'm going to actually go ahead and turn off my camera. Off cam, I'm going to go ahead and attach some hair. I'm not going to put on full costume. I'm going to keep on what I have on, which is just a t-shirt and a pair of shorts, comfortable. Um, but I'll let you see the look with the hair. So I'll be back here in just a minute, guys. <laughs> 